Since the release of Flux, the open source community has contributed various derivative models and tools, including LoRa, ControlNets, IP Adapter, and more, some of which have shown promising results. I have also produced numerous videos to introduce them. However, Flux.1 Dev and Schnell are distillation models, and no one except the Black Forest team can directly train on the true base model. This time, the official team, Black Forest Labs, has personally stepped in to release the Flux Tools Toolkit, which includes the fill model from inpainting and outpainting, Redex for style composition transfer, as well as Canny and Depth Control Net. Will they become the top performers in their respective fields? Next, I will produce a series of videos striving to find the best practices for each tool, model. Following the order of the models, today I will take you on an in-depth exploration of the fill model, followed by Redex and Control Nets. If you're interested, feel free to subscribe. In this video, let's first discuss the functions of the fill model, its different versions, and then utilize it within Comfy UI to achieve a series of different in-paint and out-paint tasks, including image restoration, editing, and expansion. All right. Without further ado, let's get started. Fill is a model specifically trained for in-paint and out-paint tasks. This model has a deeper understanding of image structure and how to fill in masked content. Simply put, it excels at image editing and expansion. The official examples demonstrate this well, changing a suit into a denim jacket, burgers into coffee, closed window into open one, adding a boat to a lake, writing on a notebook. They look good, but how about the real results? What kind of prompts and parameters are needed? Is the model demanding on graphics cards? Are there other usage scenarios? Let's verify them one by one. Opening the model release page, there are two files to note in the file list. A.safetensers is the accompanying VAE file. The same is used by the Flux.1 dev model. The other 23.8 GB file is the newly released model as large as Flux.1 dev. But don't worry about your graphics card not being able to handle it, as there is already a GGUF version with lower resource requirements. Returning to the model page, click on Models on the right side of Quantizations, and you can see two repositories. Choose the one with higher downloads. Looking at the file list, there are nine different versions of quantized models. Of course, I downloaded all of them. Apart from the GGUF models, I also grabbed the FP8 version, which is 11.09 GB. You can find the download link in the video description. This is a comparison of 11 different models. I used to add a sun hat to a picture of a girl with a fluffy hairstyle. Except for Q3 underscore K underscore S, which didn't handle the interaction between hair and the hat well, the other 10 images are acceptable to me. You can download different models based on your GPU memory size. Theoretically, larger models have a higher probability of better results. Comfy UI has many optimizations for loading models, allowing you to use models much larger than your GPU memory, but at the cost of slower performance. It's best to do what you can manage. Regardless of which model you choose to download, they should all be placed in the model slash unet directory. You can create a folder like me for easier management. Before using it, we need to upgrade Comfy UI by clicking Update Comfy UI in the Manager, or you may encounter errors. Now that everything is ready, drag and drop the fill workflow provided by Comfy UI. This workflow is relatively simple, similar to the basic Flux text to image generation process. Instead of guiding you through adding each node one by one, let's directly see how to use it. For the original and FP8 models, you can directly load them. I'll show you how to use GGUF. You need to install this GGUF plugin first. Add the dual CLIP loader, GGUF, node, which is compatible with both GGUF format and normal format clips. Select clip underscore L and T5XXL. And make sure the type is set to flux, replacing the previous node connections. Add the unet loader, GGUF, node. Select the largest Q8 in GGUF, and delete the previous model loading node. Please note that in this workflow, the guidance is set to 30 by default. Let me show you the comparison images I generated. If the value is too low, the results may be slightly inferior. For VAE, select Flux VAE. 
load an image of a lovely lady at work. I'm going to change her necklace to a pearl one. Right-click the image and select Open in Mask Editor. Erase the original necklace, and it's okay if the area is a bit larger. Save it to the node. In the prompt, only fill in what we want to generate within the masked area, which is Pearl Necklace. Click Run. And the Pearl Necklace is done. Let's add a logo to the ladies' clothes. Right-click the finished image, click Copy, and paste it into the Load Image node. Use the Mask Editor again. This time to paint a smaller area on the clothes. Fill in the prompt with minimalist logo design with a sheep element on the cloth. Click Run. I'm very satisfied with this little sheep logo, it blends well with the clothes. It's getting cold, so let's give her a hat. Repeat the previous steps, copy the image, paste it, and paint the area for the hat. Fill in the prompt with black cap and click Run. The hat is added, but I think it doesn't look great. Since it's a random seed, let's try again. This time it looks much better. Besides adding new elements to the image, the in-painting model also has a powerful feature of restoring images. Let me demonstrate that. Open the MS Paint of Windows, load the previously generated image, and let me make a few random strokes to cause some damage. After saving, load it into Comfy UI. There are two options for the prompt. Leave it blank or describe the entire image. I'll take the lazy route. Paint over the areas where I drew randomly, including one spot with many hair strands to see if it can be repaired. Click Run. It's great, the flaws are not noticeable. I think everyone understands now, so I won't do more experiments. Let's move on to outpaint. Actually, outpaint is a special kind of in-paint, but the area to be filled is no longer within the image, but in the expanded area. The process is basically the same, except for one additional node called pad image for outpainting. Connect it to the workflow. Use the recently repaired image as the basis this time. Select an expansion of 400 on both left and right sides. Leave the prompt empty to let it improvise based on the current image content. And click Run. It's good, the junction fits well. I'll expand another 400 pixels downwards this time. I'm going to give the working lady some energy. Fill in the prompt with a cup of coffee and click Run. There's no problem, a cup of coffee appears on the table, and the lower part of the computer and the lady's hands are appropriately completed in the frame. I feel that this level of difficulty is a bit low, so I'll increase the challenge. Switch back to the original image of the lady. Add an image crop node.
set the width to 512 and the height to 1024. And select bottom right for the position, which will cut off the left half of the image. Accordingly, write 512 in the left field of the pad image for outpainting node to add a mask for the missing part. Add preview image nodes respectively to see the effects intuitively. Clear the prompt. Click Run. The cropped and filled parts match our expectations. And the final result is also good. It's different from the original image but the filling is very reasonable, including the length and curl of the hair, the material of the clothing, and the background. In summary, the fill model is very practical, especially in its strengths of in-painting and out-painting, surpassing raw image generation models, but it is a new base model, so the LORAS training on the flux generation model are not working. That's it for today's video. The links to the models, workflows, and comparison images will be in the video description. The next video in this series is about Redex. If you're interested, please subscribe. See you next time.